something about this room that is similar to your office. What it is. We're not this far. Everyone speak up. The voices can be lost. I see it. I have I have just told also told you some of the going to have as a result of that that we take us on and uh, mention the conversation that we present to these people and the issue that could be raised. So it's going to take a uh, cap, I guess, if you want us to, yes, to be. We can do. We define our ships very carefully. So yes. not, nothing else will do. Ladies and gentlemen, President Mubarak and I have just completed a most fruitful and wide-ranging set of meetings. Our discussions were frank and cordial and covering a number of matters of mutual concern. President Mubarak's visit demonstrates more clearly than any words the continuity of American-Egyptian relations and reflects the strong ties that bind us together. Foremost among these ties is our belief in and commitment to a peaceful solution to the Arab-Israeli dispute. President Mubarak has assured us that Egypt remains committed to a peaceful solution of this conflict. And to that end, we'll spare no effort to achieve a comprehensive peace as set forth in the Camp David Agreement. During our talks, we reaffirmed our commitment to press ahead with the autonomy talks in order to reach agreement on a declaration of principles, which is the best means of making tangible progress toward a solution of the Palestinian problem in all its aspects as envisaged by Camp David. We reviewed our mutual concerns about the strategic threats to the region, and reconfirmed our identity views on the need to work closely together. We discussed in some detail our economic and military assistance programs. We agreed to consult regularly on methods of implementing and improving them. These consultations have in fact already been, or begun, I should say, among our principal advisors. And finally, let me just say that it has been a pleasure having this opportunity to further my personal relationship with President Mubarak. I'm confident that we will be working closely together to achieve those many goals that are in the mutual interest of our two countries. Thank you very much, and President Mubarak, we've been delighted to have you here. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased with the outcome of my talks with President Reagan. As he just stated, the discussions were held, we held were frank and cordial. They were very fruitful as well. I welcome the reaffirmation, the continuation of the U.S. role as a full partner in the peace process. We are determined to pursue our peace efforts until a comprehensive settlement is reached according to the Cam David Accord. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Thank President. You. Thank you.
unacceptably heavy burden on the new businessman and the small businessman. Small firms don't have the luxury of large staffs to fill out government forms, and they can't afford high-powered Washington lobbyists. Large corporations also pay a high price for unneeded regulations. Much of the burden takes the form of growing budgets for lawyers and accountants, costs that are handed on to the consumer. But the men and women who run small businesses must shoulder these burdens directly. Often they're the only ones who know enough about their companies to complete all the detailed government forms, leaving that much less time to do what they do best, managing their organizations and developing better products and services. A vigorous small business sector is essential to a productive and competitive economy. For all of the talk in Washington about government creating new jobs, most of the new jobs actually created are in small private enterprises. Between 1969 and 1976, 82 percent of all the new jobs were in businesses employing a hundred or fewer employees, and 66 percent were in companies with 20 or fewer employees. Currently, 38 percent of our gross national product is produced by small business, and small business continues to be our most prolific source of innovation. So this administration's regulatory relief program, headed by Vice President Bush, is paying special attention to regulations that come down hardest on small firms. In a moment, I'll turn the lectern over to the Vice President, who will announce a new series of deregulatory initiatives focused on the concerns of small businesses. But first, I want to say a few words about the information collection budget for fiscal year 1982, which is being released this morning. The Information Collection Budget, or Paperwork Budget, sets limits on the burdens imposed in the private sector by federal forms and record-keeping requirements. Under the Paperwork Reduction Act of 1980, most federal forms and record-keeping requirements must be approved by the Office of Management and Budget. One of the requirements for approval is a sound estimate of the total workload measured in hours. The form will impose on all of the individuals who will have to fill it out an important step in realizing annual reductions in paperwork by streamlining or eliminating forms. We've made some real progress. When I took office, Americans were spending over one and a half billion hours each year filling out forms and records to satisfy federal laws and regulations. Think of it, that's a, a workload greater than the entire workforce of the automotive industry. We will be eliminating nearly 200 million hours of this wasteful burden by the end of the year. A reduction of over one hour of costly paperwork for every man and woman in the United States. This means a savings of productive effort equal to that of 95,000 people working 40 hours a week for an entire year. And as the details in the budget illustrate, Many of these savings come from reducing tax and regulatory forms that are unusually burdensome to small businesses. These paperwork reductions are a good start, but they're only a start. The budget that we're releasing this morning still does not document all of the federal paperwork that must be identified and reduced. And as you will see in a moment, Many of the issues that are being designated for revision by my task force on regulatory relief are based upon complaints from small companies about unnecessary paperwork. So now I'm going to turn over the proceedings to Vice President Bush to discuss these issues with you. And thank you very much. Thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. How about the threat from Cuba, Mr. President? How serious is it? Can you give us something on that before you go? No, Bill, because it doesn't have a darn thing to do with what we're hearing together here the rest of the morning. True, but I thought. Let me introduce before we start Kristen.